Hello, I'm Pastor Joe, and I want to welcome you to Impact. Impact is a video teaching series where I try to help nurture your faith in, your commitment to, and your relationship with Jesus Christ. Have you ever heard the saying that good fences make good neighbors? Generally, what that saying means is that neighbors respect one another. They respect the boundaries. Uh, farmers will work to maintain the fences between them so that their herds don't cross over into the neighbor's farm. And so, therefore, that makes good neighbors. Well, that saying probably led to another phrase that we often use when we are talking about trying to resolve differences from someone. You can see this fence here has kind of got some problems. It needs fixing. And so often when there's a disagreement between people, we talk about we need to mend the fences. So what does that phrase have to do with the church? What does that phrase have to do with us as Christians? Does it have anything to do with it? Well, I think it does, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. So come on, let's get started. In 1879, there was a U.S. Senator, John Sherman, and he traveled from Washington to his home in Mansfield, Ohio. While he was there, he gave a speech, and during that speech he said that I've come to town in order to mind my fences. Now, it's likely that what he meant was he came to look after and mend some fences, repair some fences on his farm, but the way many people interpreted what he said was that he came to look after his political career. There was an upcoming election, and so he was there to campaign and drum up support and try to win over people maybe he had uh, pushed away or offended. And so over time, the phrase mending fences began to be used for repairing a fractured relationship. So what does this have to do with the church? What does this have to do with us as Christians? Well, when we turn to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3, Paul says, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. See, as Christians, we are challenged to work for unity. We are by nature to be about maintaining the unity. This doesn't mean that we're always going to agree. We're not after uniformity, but we are after unity. We are to maintain that respect for one another and maintain that working relationship. Again, if we look to what Paul says, we can turn to the fifth chapter of Galatians, chapter 15, or excuse me, verse 15, and he says, If you keep on biting and devouring one another, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. Now, I think it's interesting because what Paul is not saying is, hey, if you have disagreements, be careful. You see, what he's saying is, when you have disagreements, as you have these disagreements as a church, as a community of faith, be careful that you don't allow them to destroy you. See, Paul knew the reality of life, that we're going to have different opinions. We're going to have different views on things. That's okay, as long as we continue to strive for unity and we continue to work together. There's always going to be those differences of opinion. The question is, how are we as a church, or how are we as Christians going to approach those differences. So here's my challenge to you. I want you in your own life, at church, at work, at home, out in the community, to strive for unity. You don't have to strive to agree on everything, but don't let those disagreements destroy you. Don't let those disagreements rip apart the unity, but let us work in the midst of those differences to move forward together. Let us walk as brothers and sisters in Christ or as neighbors in the community to continue to work together, even though we may hold differences of opinion. This is something that we as a nation desperately need now. And sadly, it's a lesson that too many churches need to learn also. Well, look, I want to thank you for joining me this week. I hope that you'll tune in next week for the next installment of the Impacts video. If you haven't already, I hope that you will take the time to subscribe to my YouTube channel. When you do so, you can click on the icon, and any time I post a new video, you'll get notified of that. Well, my prayer continues to be, until we get together again, that God's blessings will be with you.